ChatGPT can give much better results if you apply some of the tips in this video. Using ChatGPT the right way is so important, especially when you're starting to use larger and more advanced prompts. I'll show you ways to achieve better results that don't require plugins or paid services. I'll look at what prompt engineering is and how to learn it, how to get the most out of jailbreaks, roughly what tokens are and why the length of conversation is so important. Some tips are a little advanced, but easy enough to understand. However, if you're looking for help getting started with ChatGPT, then check out my other videos too. My first bit of advice if you are getting into playing with prompts is to save your own work. Say you've got started with ChatGPT, tried a bunch of questions and maybe you've found a repeatable use for it. A recurring email for example, or a grammar checker you use before sending messages. You may notice that some questions are being answered well and others are just lacking. It's likely that some of your prompts are more engineered than you realise. A lot of users, when a question doesn't give the right answer, make changes to their prompt that steer the AI more in the right direction. After a while, these changes add up and turn into long detailed prompts. If this is the case for you, then you're already a prompt engineer, congrats. Save this prompt in a document and keep expanding on it. By the end, you'll have a prompt for every stage of your workflow. Importantly, the true goal of any prompt is to give us an output that is personalized to us. Our language, our style, our formatting. Nothing will achieve this more than prompts written by you from the ground up. Extracts from an email prompt can be used to define your writing style for a social media post or your nice way of including lists could be used repeatedly. Nothing beats developing a prompt yourself, but if you do come up against a request that you're not sure how to write, there is help online. An example being this repo, ready-made prompts designed to turn ChatGPT into a storyteller, a web designer, a mechanic to fix your car, or a financial expert who can help get you rich. It's an extensive list to get ChatGPT into the right state of mind for any task. I'll leave a link in the description. Another tip for reusing pre-made material is using keyword lists that are tailored to you. Everyone's writing style is unique. The way we lay out sentences and paragraphs or what unique language we use can all be listed, making it possible to create descriptive lists of how we talk and then feed this to the AI. Getting this list is simple too. We give ChatGPT a load of our writing and ask it to give us back keywords that accurately describe our style. We then pick what we feel is accurate and then when we've got our final list, we can add this to any future prompt. ChatGPT's content's great, but can be improved by being more tailored to you. If the thought of developing your own prompts is exciting, then you're not alone, and the world of prompt engineering is only getting bigger. While AI isn't coming to take everyone's job, quite like some may believe, those workers are the designers, coders and copywriters who also are pros at prompt engineering. They will be. Prompt engineering is the process of writing messages to ChatGPT that force the AI to give perfect responses or complete tasks as accurately as possible. Any question we ask can be written better, with the result we get back being as good as the prompt we give and knowing how to write high quality prompts on the fly is already creating a skill gap. It's about knowing what the AI is expecting us to provide but also making it clear what we expect back. Those who've watched my other videos will know this, but for me a good way to remember how to do this is to remember the who, what, why and how who you want the AI to be, what you want it to produce, why we want it, and how it should be formatted. It doesn't matter the order, but if the AI is given all of the above, it'll be well on its way to giving us better responses. Prompt engineering is definitely a learnable process, and in my opinion, repetition and practice will get you there the quickest. Anytime you ask ChatGPT something, take a couple minutes to add some refinement. It's comparable to Googling something. There's those that don't know how to Google efficiently, and there's those that do. If you're interested in learning, there's online courses available, heaps of Reddit threads, and I'm already working on some prompt engineering tutorials. A final OP recommendation about developing prompts is user prompt maker. I'll leave this one in the description for you to try, but it basically allows you to follow a process where ChatGPT will build a prompt with you. Asking questions, it'll find out what you're trying to get back and work with you to bulk out the fine details. It can go on for a while, but it's a good way to learn and it's an autopilot way to get great prompts written for you without missing anything. Now we've looked at how useful and great pre-made prompts are. What if a prompt did more than just set the stage? What if it stripped away all of ChatGPT's limitations, resetting it to a neutral complete service with no messages explaining why it's not allowed to have its own opinion or why it's banned from predicting the future? Jailbreaks are pre-written opening messages that do exactly that. They work by using roleplay. They achieve results by establishing a hypothetical scenario and then putting the AI in as a fictional dialogue creator. 
distancing ChatGPT from its current limitations. And jailbreaks do have a genuine use. In a time where OpenAI is applying sweeping rules and then refining them later, it's leaving some legitimate discussions off limits. Use jailbreaks to get ChatGPT to write less like an AI and to make future predictions, make bold claims, speak openly about people and places and answer without always apologizing. I've made videos on the latest jailbreaks and even one where I made my own, so I won't be looking at them right now. Instead, I'll look at how we can be getting even better results when we do use them. First, regenerate often. Jailbreaks can be hit and miss, but don't forget that ChatGPT will have a whole bunch of replies ready, and by cycling through them, you can ensure you're not missing the best one. If that doesn't work, probably the most effective method is to tell the AI to stay in character and complete the request. By telling it to do so, the AI will readopt its character and give a reply more like we're after. The next step is something that many forget and end up confused as to why the AI is saying weird things. Restart the conversation regularly. The longer the conversation goes on for, the harder it will be for the AI to stay in character and give limitless replies. When using jailbreaks, remember that we're starting a conversation off with a prompt that's thousands of characters long, already pushing us close to ChatGPT's limits. It's always best just to restart after the first reply or after a short conversation. If you still find yourself with a jailbreak, not quite doing what you want, it could be what you're after is too specific. If so, try adding in a new line at the bottom of the jailbreak, including some instructions for the AI to ignore these relevant limitations. Jailbreaks can often do a lot, but can rarely do it all. Don't be afraid to play around and make an existing jailbreak even better. Not all the advice given so far is just limited to jailbreaks. An important rule in general is to start a new conversation with each new question. ChatGPT will output worse results the longer the conversation is or the more new topics we add to the chat. The AI is trained and has learned to give high quality results on specific topics, but the more niche a whole conversation is, the less training it may have in place. Meaning for a long chat about 10 different topics, it will have less experience to reply well. Not only this, but the AI has a capped memory per conversation and therefore a limited number of characters before it starts reusing existing memory and forgetting what it already knows. There's also a lot to do with what characters are used, including spaces and subwords, but the metric for this is tokens. Tokens are essentially pieces of words and each conversation has a certain amount of tokens before it starts reducing performance. For example, the unpaid version has 4,000 tokens or around 3,000 words. That includes the prompt and the reply combined. Therefore, if your first message is 2,000 words, ChatGPT won't be able to produce a large reply as well as retain the information you gave it. Try to find a balance between the length of the opening message and your need for a long conversation. Now, I'm not saying don't ask follow-ups, especially if they're still on topic, it's actually so important to make sure you do do that. As with the prompt maker, having ChatGPT check how complete and accurate our messages are is OP. So try to finish a task by asking these types of questions. Am I missing anything? Have you included all there is to know? Or is there a counter argument to what I've said? Asking reflective questions that make sure we're not missing anything is a great habit and improves results. As discussed, length matters. But what are some ways that we can work on this? Again, we need to find balance between the size of the input and the length of the expected output. Let's look at writing a book. We may want to get the entire thing written in one go, but that's not going to be possible with the token limit in place. So we've got to split up the work into sections or individual paragraphs. With this method, we can give the AI a decent description of the storyline and have it produce the first paragraph with some follow-up questions to improve it. We can then refine this, improving the style, length and storyline. Then we can combine our previous description with this paragraph to make the next one, spending time making that perfect too. The AI now has a decent description and plenty of reference material. But now our opening prompt is getting long and we need to start balancing the length. If we give it too much, we risk the quality of the output getting worse. Too little and it won't know enough about the story. So what we can do is ask it to summarize the storyline for each paragraph and then combine this with the two latest paragraphs for style reference. We then continue this process, providing summaries and examples bit by bit. It's a great way to give us tight control of the story and the style while condensing what the AI needs to know and keeping it all balanced. This is just one example of how we can break up conversations to reduce the impact of the limits in place. While I've tried to stick to tips that are available to all, there's no denying that the most efficient way to get the best results out of ChatGPT is to upgrade. 
As we saw, tokens are important and plus users get double. Not to mention with features like higher accuracy, faster responses and no downtime, actually using the tool becomes easier. What makes ChatGPT Plus genuinely worth the money are some of the latest features. It having access to the internet is huge. Real-time data, access to live news and the ability to read web pages rather than copying and pasting. There's also an ever-increasing number of websites, apps and services that now have plugins with ChatGPT, giving Plus users access to integrations for many websites they use on a daily basis. ChatGPT is powerful already, but Plus is for sure worth the extra. I have one last slightly unrelated tip. Use tables. Someone reached out on my Discord and said they'd liked my advice in a previous video and created a fitness plan they've been using ever since. He mentioned that getting the plan output as a table instead of a list was the way to go, and I agree. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found any tips useful, consider subscribing as it really does help out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one soon.